Now to a health alert. This summer, the Centers for Disease Control published a study which reveals the rates of suicide have risen in all but one state over the last several years. A staggering 45,000 people over the age of 10 committed suicide in 2016. That's more than twice the national homicide rate. Joining me now this morning to discuss this alarming trend is psychiatrist Dr. Marcus De Carvalho, who's the founder of Healthy Minds and Wellbeing. Good morning to you, Doc. Thank you Thank for you. being here. It's always Thanks good to have you on me. here because I, I think that all of us, particularly, and let's focus on teens now, particularly in light of the 17 year old who took his own life, um, a student, a local student here. Um, w I think we all worry as parents because um, maybe we think that by talking to our child about whether or not they suffer from depression could somehow be planting a seed in their head. And that's it's not true. Right? right. Yeah, that's a huge misconception. In actuality, when we actually confront somebody gently and lovingly, you know, hey, are you having thoughts of hurting yourself? Are you having thoughts of ending your life? It's actually a rescue. There is no data to support that you're going to plant a seed. Actually, if you come to your child and say, look, I've noticed you've been more withdrawn lately. Um, I've noticed you're not really with your friends. We're not talking like we normally are. There's a change. What's going on? Are, are you having these thoughts? you will actually save the life of your child because when somebody actually comes to them and tells them that, it's almost as if they're rescued and they don't want to actually do it. In fact, the time period that somebody actually starts to contemplate suicide, give them one to three days where you can actually get involved in their lives, you can pull them out of that. And the majority of people who actually attempt suicide, when you ask them, are you happy you survived? They'll tell you yes. It's interesting because I think that as parents, we are very in tune with the feelings of our children only because we hear on the news bullying and, and you know, this obsession about being skinny and size zero and size right. two for girls. And so you worry that, that, that our children have more stress on them than they've ever had. That's right. But there's a difference between them being under stress and then them having a condition that would lead to suicide. Is there? Well, that's, a, that's another great point. In actuality, the CDC has done a study that 53% of people who have actually committed suicide don't even have a mental illness. Mm. What is their social situation? Are they in the middle of a social crisis? Look at our teens. I mean, you could post something on, on social media about them. They could start that morning out great, and by mid-afternoon, they are crushed. And since they are so young and have very few years of walking on this planet right. and maturity, how are they going to navigate through that? If their social network falls apart all of a sudden, they're going to rely on their parents to navigate through that. Do your parents have a dialogue with them that they've established since their young age to help them navigate through these stresses? So it's very important just because your child or, it, we, and we're talking about teens, but what about just regular right, adults, adults, right? Sure. Just because they're doing great and they look great doesn't mean that something can change in their lives and have them commit suicide. So I think it's important that we, as a community, as a family, we're always connected one-on-one, -on -one. we're in front of people. Social media pulls us from that and creates a fantasy-like world that's an illusion that we're always trying to compare ourselves to, okay? And, and social media can be a great thing, but for a young teen or somebody who's disconnected and has no friends, it can actually really hurt them. So how do we teach them the coping mechanism to not go from having a terrible day, let's say, on social media and not doing well in, in class and not making the grade or not getting into that college that you wanted to so that they don't go from point A to all of a sudden they're contemplating suicide? That's great. Fifty percent of teens in the United States will never ever in their high schools be talked about mental health, depression, or suicide. Fifty percent. A third of those will go on to their first freshman year in, high, in college and uh, have depression. A quarter of those will actually contemplate suicide. How do we help these individuals? From a young age, being connected with their families. When a family member or a loved one realizes, look, this individual really is struggling with depression or suicide, we need to get professional help. What's out there? Traditional therapy, medications, and even really great innovative treatments like transcranial magnetic stimulation where we use MRI technology to isolate areas in the brain that are responsible for depression. We can find these areas, wow. create magnetic fields in the brain, and actually increase the chemicals like serotonin that treat depression. The same chemicals that we use medications for. And let me, let me be honest, you know, I'm a physician and I prescribe medicines, but medications alone probably have a 30% chance of working. Mm -hmm. Where you have TMS that has about a 60 to 70% chance of working with none of those side effects because we go right to the area of the brain. So 
in actuality, when we look at this, that we know that this stuff exists in the brain, this is a true medical disease. There should be no stigma associated with it. You're not weak because you're depressed. Some people, for some reason, genetically, don't have these chemicals at the right amounts when they have to navigate through life. As we continue to go through life, we realize life is hard. It's not like we're more resilient. There is more responsibility, and we need help, and we tease these individuals out, and we have the treatments for them. And, and, and make sure that the coping mechanisms are there, and also just make sure that they know that you are never alone, which is why, thank you, Doc, for being here. If you or someone you know is struggling, there is help available. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 800-273-8255. Someone is available to talk 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are wonderful local psychiatrists here like Dr. De Carvalho, also who's available. And, and you know, you can also dial the 211. We have posted that number on our website, newsforjax.com. Nikki?